I have about half an hour, I guess. That's what I should basically uh, look for and uh, try and keep uh, some amount of time for questions. I would be very surprised if my session did not uh, uh, prompt you to ask some questions. And But if I do, I would certainly request that please raise your hand and put the point up front. Only, th only uh, thing I would say is that I'm sure all of us have views on that. I would want you to basically just le lever around me as the facilitator for the discussion. So put your points very uh, sharp. I will be more than happy to take it. So before I start, I think it is only uh, uh, you know, uh, important that I acknowledge the work uh, put by the analytics uh, uh, India team and the magazine that they have been bringing out so uh, you know, religiously, sincerely for so many years now. So all the best and very good work so far. And also Jigsaw for uh, you know, pulling me into this uh, to be one of the speaker. So I certainly appreciate their uh, you know, gesture. At the same time, please, if there is anything wrong that I say, it is entirely my personal view. And if there is something right, then certainly Jigsaw had something to do about it. Yeah? So with that uh, sort of a, uh, a harbor, I started talking about or rather thinking about this particular topic and I was kind of, uh, you know, in many, many thoughts as to what really should be done, you know, and uh, I, I thought that uh, will I be going here and trying to teach the lion to roar and the eagle to soar if I talk about something like, you know, how do you make decisions and those kind of things. So I, after especially yesterday's sessions that I came through, I made some changes in the plan that I uh, I would basically use in the session today. So to rest the case right here on the part about the life skill, I think if decision is a life skill, if making good decision is a life skill, then analytics, which is the science of decision making, has to be a life skill, right? And I don't think I need to basically profess uh, more around that particular part. And I would be more than happy to hear any uh, contrary view on this. But while we go ahead, let me just take one step back and ask you one simple question. Why do you think the analytics projects uh, fail? Is it because of weak uh, models or is it because of weak implementation? I would like to see a show of hands into saying how many of you feel that you could not make the model and therefore your analytics failed. How many of you say that the model was there but I could not implement it right there? So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, of the same opinion and the research says that two-thirds and above of the projects fail because they were not implemented in the way it should have been implemented. Now remember one thing very clearly, that analytics is a science of approximation, right? Analytics is a science of data. It will solve data problem in a progressive way. Believe me, it will not solve emotional problems. Logic can never solve emotional problems. Took me a time to learn that, but I have learned that particular lesson, and I, I stand by that particular thing. And therefore, when we look at the things like the Gartner hype cycle, I am very, very surprised that if you are talking about the hype that, are we, that we are creating in our analytics and business intelligence, why does it, implementation does not figure in this? Why year on year, Gartner keeps pulling up more sophisticated, more complicated, more, uh, you know, uh, higher computing uh, uh, pieces as the actual solution that should be provided than talking about the implementation side. I think at all point in time, there should be one big circle here, right at the innovation but, trigger. Uh, it's a good time to ask that everybody can hear me, right? And the speed of my speaking, I'm a, I'm a professor by, uh, you know, training. So I should ask that question, right? Because I get a lot of people who are nodding their head in the classes, but I know what they're nodding at, right? <laughs> so it's, it's, so I, I, I feel that there is a need to put a big circle around here at all times into saying the maturity of implementation, right? And you can't overstress that particular point very simply because the idea of I mean, they say that, you know, to err is human and to really goof up things, you need computers. And to make the computers goof up even bigger, you need a team. 
right? So that is that is basically how how this whole thing really translates. So I thought, okay, fine. Can we go to the sexy side of uh, the analytics to start with, and at the same time ask this one weird question that keeps haunting me all time as to why is the analytics uh, why does the analytics talent matters? Right. We know this particular thing very, very uh, uh, well that, uh, uh, you know, the, the sexiest uh, job of the 20th cent uh, 21st century and so on and so forth. And I'll, I'll be talking a bit about that part as well. But I want to share a small story with you to see if we are actually committing the same error here as well. During the World War II, there was one very interesting thing that happened. That the aircrafts which are going for air raids, when they would come back, they would be analyzed for their undercarriage for what kind of casualty or what kind of hit have they basically suffered. What will they use it for? They will basically reinforce those parts to make the aircraft stronger, right? They did that for a while, but somehow the casualty did not drop. They would lose as many aircrafts as they were losing at all times. Any guesses why? The ones that needed to be measured Right? Somebody needed to go somewhere else to measure them. Right? Possibly they should have seen the places where they were getting hit and reinforced all other places rather than reinforcing that particular place. So why am I giving you this example? Right? Because we, it's not just there that we see that particular example. We see that particular example in everyday life as well. Right? We try to make ideas about the customer behavior to increase the market share by looking at our customer data, right? If you don't have 51% of the customer as your, of the population of the customer as your customer, then you still don't know why people are buying your product or why majority of people are buying your product. The people who are already buying your product are doing that anyways. Bugging them more, asking them more questions and all of that is possibly going to turn them away. We make that error all the time, right? Then, obviously, we have these issues of increasing promotion during the peak periods. You see that happening all the time. People are buying in spite of your promotion. People would have bought possibly in spite of your promotions as well. But then the logic is because the next shop is giving promotion, if I don't give, I will be dead, right? It's basically geo versus the rest of the world now. I don't know if you noticed on the way in that big queue of people standing at the Reliance Digital to get the, get the SIM card. I tried to take a picture, but somehow Reliance has some technology blocked my pictures. Anyways. <laughs> right? So is that really the paradox of the decision scientist? Right? <clears throat> I, I basically throw this particular, uh, you know, the, the whole liar's uh, dilemma question out in there into saying that the blue button is true, the red button is false. And right, this you would have certainly heard of this, uh, the last paradox actually, right? I just changed the word a bit here. The non-analytics world knows nothing. The analytics world knows everything. Are we actually stuck in this whole uh, old, uh, you know, the um, Epimendes uh, paradox, which is what the last paradox is in this whole analytics world today? Are we making that same error of trying to understand how do we basically integrate, how do we basically make analytics succeed in the longer run? Is that basically making the current set of analytics professional learn more complex and advanced skills is the answer? Or is it bringing the idea of analytics skills to the rest of the world? What will have a bigger impact? What will have a bigger value? I, I again leave this question open to you. From here, I actually uh, uh, go to that particular thing of the sexy data scientist. I'm just going to run through very quickly and tell you, you know, where, where really our gap in this particular thinking is. That the anatomy of data scientists, which was triggered by an article that uh, HBR published, talked about the sexiest job of the 21st century, right? 
and what do they basically talk about? So what does a good data scientist do? Well, a whole lot of things. We might get excited by each of this, right? So there is a degree in geek, right? Problem solving process can solve every problem. Is a mathlete, is uh, suitable, basically can take any uh, roles. Uh, it's a, he, in fact, in the sleep also, you know, uh, whispers insights. That's, that's the basic idea. It's, uh, it's a very good, um, uh, you know, infographic which I picked from uh, FICO a few years back. It doesn't end there.